All right. Hello, everyone. I am at Connor75, and I'll be running Donkey Kong 64 today. I, uh, would my comment hitters like to introduce themselves? Uh, sure. My name is Zerulda. I'm a DK64 speedrunner and have the N64 records for 101 and no levels early. Hi, I'm Brandino. I've run this game in the past and also a Rareware community member for a lot of these games and a good friend. Uh, I'll also be Connor's player too today. <laughs> And I'm Donkey Kong, I'm the star of this game. All right, so to get started, normally we'd go and start the file here for time, but I'm going to go watch some cutscenes instead. So I'm gonna give a countdown here in three, two, one, go. And I'm actually looking at my phone right now, and oh, I actually failed it. Let me try this again. How can you fail watching a cutscene? <laughs> it's way harder than it looks. Cutscenes are hard, man. There we go. All right, so that was a pretty precise uh, input I had to do there to uh, cancel the intro story at the right time. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> What'd you do to the sound? Where is it? I guess we have lost sound, but that's okay. We will continue on. We don't need it. But that's my favorite part of the game. Oh, I'm so sorry to Grant Kirkhope. I really hope he's not watching. <sighs> well, uh, maybe Cranky has sound we can buy. Yeah, let you buy the sound back. That, that's how this game works. <laughs> yeah, that sounds reasonable. It's the sound DLC, you forgot to pay okay, for it. Okay, let's see what he says. No. Oh, I guess we're not seeing what he says. All right, so there's actually a somewhat precise jump I have to hopefully get in here. At exactly 55 seconds on my phone timer, I'm going to attempt to jump into the dive barrel here. So, so he just got it, nice. So is using your phone timer mean this runs tool assistant? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so kind of what's going on here is that Connor canceled the intro story at a very specific point. It's now playing in the background, and because it's playing in the background, the fadeouts will still happen. But if we can interrupt the fadeouts with like a loading zone, then they won't happen. Um, and so that's going to be important, is getting into these barrels at a very specific time when the fade-outs in the story are actually happening. So this is all kind of an auto-scroller right now. I don't so, know, it looked like it was wasting time to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very astute, yes. Yeah, so it looked like I was wasting a little bit of time there, but it was completely intentional to enter that exactly one minute and 24 seconds on my phone timer, which I don't need anymore. Yeah. So I will stop being on my phone for this run. The important thing to note is that the first four minutes and 26 seconds of this run is fairly cookie cutter for um, an experienced runner. Um, you'll notice that pretty much every no levels early run starts out this way. Um, not in the original file state, but starting with the intro story. Oh, 50. All right, now 50, we can... I don't know about that one, Connor. Uh, reset. A little... Yeah, let me, let me reset real quick. We're done yeah. with this. <laughs> All right, we are now quitting. Hey, so I really like the DK rap. You think you could look at that play? Oh, yeah. Ooh, that would be so I love fun. the DK rap. It's my favorite rap because I, Donkey Kong, am singing in it. Oh, you're the leader of the bunch. Yeah. Oh, I want to hear your mixtape. Yeah. Oh, why'd you skip it? I wanted to hear it. Wait. Okay, there we go. All right, All right so we're going to try this again, actually listening to the DK rap. Maybe that will bring me some good luck. Oh, you're playing some of the bosses, too? Oh, uh, no. actually, let's do some multiplayer. Brandino, you ready? Yeah. All right, let's go. All, All right. right, I got this. Oh, I lost? <laughs> Wait. Connor's just that good. Hold, so, hold on, hold on. What did you do? We're going to the angry Aztec. Never mind. But you got a point where you didn't even play. All right, I got you this time. <laughs> oh. Man, no, it's really still not letting us into multiplayer for some reason. Let's try to go to some other bosses, like Mad Jack. Oh, Mad Jack. Wait, no, wait, that, was like my, that, that was my favorite boss. I actually love yeah. Puff Toss. Oh, oh, this is a great, great cutscene. Cut great right. cutscene. <laughs> Who's right. that? And then at this part, Linky... Wait, what is going on? Yo, I like All the right. sparkly thing, though. All right. Third time's the charm. Oh, okay. Okay, I guess not. Listen, this is our fail-safe right here. The fungi boss cutscene. This will play. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, so essentially what Connor did here is he was going through um, multiplayer and through the bosses in order to avoid watching the cutscenes during the actual run. So when I said the first four minutes and 26 seconds is pretty much standardized, this is what I meant. 
We're trying to avoid getting all these cutscenes later, and one of the later effects of getting pulled into the game um, will allow us to have infinite health, um, all of the guns and upgrades, and uh, we will not be able to pause, unfortunately. So it'll make for some interesting routing. Yeah, and the entire point of this whole auto scroller section here at the start is to get all of the moves in the game. So by ending on that Fungi Forest boss cut scene, we're going to have every single cranky upgrade, candy upgrade, funky upgrade. So while that was four and a half minutes that we just had to waste and do various training barrels, go look at cutscenes, it is very much worth it to have all of the moves so we don't need to get any of those banana coins and buy moves during the speedrun at all since we're going to start with all of them. So fun. Check out my treehouse. Pretty sick, huh? <laughs> Yo, I really like what you did with the place. The scattered banana peels really do it for me. And the Candy Kong poster. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Cherry on top. Um, so... Going into these barrels at the beginning allows you to do these moves. So there's orange throwing, vine grabbing, diving in barrels. Each barrel is named after its respective thing. So now you have the orange barrel and the vine barrel, and of course the barrel barrel, which we did earlier. So now that all four are done, we can do our basic training moves, and the oranges will come in handy later for sure. So now you're just going to leave training ground yeah. normally, right? I'm going to walk out this tunnel. Wait, dude, you missed you the tunnel. I, I got lost, I'm sorry. Hey, right, he just wanted to go swimming. Well, why are you swimming? What, what is... What? Okay. Huh. And there we go. Yeah, that's We're out. I, did, I didn't know there wasn't a wall there. I could have just left uh, training grounds right then and there the whole time. Do we have a quick moment for a very important announcement? Uh, KLMC yeah. is not important, so yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> more importantly, we have hit $50,000 raised for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. All right. Let's hear it. Uh, we also have a $100 donation from the Sound Defense, who says, I'm donating $1 for every, oh, banana, in the run. <laughs> Good luck to Connor, and make sure to check out the DK64 randomizer. Wait, wait, wait. Best randomizer on the internet. Uh, so so he advice, says, anything. oh, banana, one dollar for every old banana. So if we could just keep saying, oh, open we just keep going over, open banana, open banana, we get this empty as well. This does seem like a gameable system for somebody uh, who dropped a hundred dollars. It's for a good cause. Wait, speedrunners abusing systems? Oh. They would never do that. Impossible. <laughs> All right, Connor is getting to the first golden banana of the run, actually. He's going to attempt to overlap getting this golden banana and entering the loading zone so he doesn't have to watch the dance cutscene. Yeah, every banana you grab. Oh. <laughs> that happens more often than you would think, honestly. Um, Wii U controls being pretty finicky. It's hard to go in a straight line. Yeah, so that's worth mentioning. DK64 is really a tale of two consoles because we have Wii U Virtual Console and we have N64, which it's, you know, it's the same game on both consoles, but the lack of lag on Wii U kind of changes the game a lot. These have similar routes and the routes have similar timings, but there is a lot that's still different between them. But essentially, I am playing on the Wii U version of the game today because it is way faster. 99% of lag is gone. So I've been running on the Wii U version for many, many years now. And although the controls leave a lot to be desired, uh, it is way faster. Wait, so, there's not a wall there either? Yeah, sorry, there, there wasn't a wall there. <laughs> oh, here's a really cool trick too, one of my favorites in the entire game. This is what DK64 is well known kick. for, is the moon kick. <laughs> So Zerolda, you want to explain how that works? <laughs> yeah, I can kind of explain how that works. <laughs> Basically, you're interrupting DK's aerial attack with a kick, and it increases the um, height that DK gets after the kick up to a certain point, so that he's just flying crotch first into the air. Yeah, it doesn't cancel the aerial movement, so boom, moon kick. And surprisingly, he's not the only character with a bit of moon tech like that. Diddy Kong also has something, but I don't think we'll be seeing that during this run. Ideally not. <laughs> the thing is, is that this is a very broken game, and there are so, so many ways to accomplish your goal of getting through a wall or doing something else funny. So there, Connor just overlapped hitting the uh, second switch to free Diddy, um, along with the entering Japes cutscene. 
um, here's something that would frustrate a casual player, but all those bananas in cages, yeah, we're just gonna go grab them, like, right now. It's quite simple to be able to swim through walls like that, actually. Um, for every north-facing wall, there is a particular angle that you can be at and just go into first person, go out of first person, and you'll go right through the wall. <laughs> and um, it's available on every map, but the uh, angle is, again, based on like which is north on the map. And this game has so many wall clips, they, they very much range from extremely easy to really difficult. And you're going to see the whole range. All right, we got one more overlap coming right here. Um, this should be with the Free Diddy cutscene. Very nice, you got it. Very good. So I guess we should also probably explain what the point of No Levels Early is. So what I've been doing around Jungle Japes is basically getting ready to Free Diddy, and then I'm also collecting a lot of these fast golden bananas because by the name No Levels Early, we aren't allowed to glitch inside the levels themselves. So we will need 100 golden bananas to enter Hideout Helm, and a lot of the routing that you're seeing is based around getting the fastest 100 golden bananas. And it's worth mentioning that this route, or this, this category rather, has many routes because this game has a lot of bananas and many are borderline, like a lot can work. For those wondering, there is another kind of middle ground category called No Major Glitches that does include collecting all the bananas as well as getting the rare, rare Nintendo coin. Um, however, that one was not as popular as No Levels Early, so that's why this is kind of the more popular one. It's a little bit quicker. Don't worry about Trough and Scoff. So now I'm we'll going to turn in, in some bananas to Trough and Scoff. I have 22 at DK, which isn't enough, so maybe oh, Diddy... Thank goodness. He looks really... Oh, you has zero, it. though. Uh-oh. What are we going to do? What, what are you doing? Uh, let's <gasps> go through the wall. What wall? So <laughs> that trick that you just saw, you're going to see a million times. It's called phase walking. It kind of works the same way as swimming through walls, um, but you're basically sliding through. It's a triple frame, triple frame perfect trick. Yeah, it is. Uh, don't get it twisted. As much as we do it across the run, it is a really hard trick. And it should be noted that the runners of this game have really found some good setups to do it, which is awesome considering that, again, it is a triple frame perfect with a controller flick in the middle of it. It's it's pretty difficult to master. All right, now we got Armadillo 1. Oh, reducing the lag? Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I did start by speedrunning this game on the Nintendo 64, so I have a lot of like lag reduction habits from back then that I tend to just still do anyway, just in case there's a tiny bit of lag. Every frame counts. There are some videos Ooh, was on nice. the side-by-side -side on the lag for between N64 and Wii U. It's pretty crazy how much Wii U just takes out of the game. Before the advent of phase walks, um, Wii U and N64 used to be separated by like eight, nine minutes, and now with Phase Rock routes, they've come as close as like two minutes of each other, which is very impressive given the sheer technical saves of Wii U. And uh, people who know this game might think it's weird, but normally you do this boss as Donkey Kong, and the game tries to silo you into using a specific Kong for a specific boss, but you actually don't have to do that at all if you can just get past the wall, which we can, because this is DK64. All right, with Connor getting to his first key here, I wanted to mention a very important aspect of no levels early, and that is that you're not able to pause. Therefore, you can't pause exit uh, out of the level, which means routing in a way to get out of the level is particularly important. So usually it involves going out of bounds and hitting the void zone. So we will see how Connor goes about that in a little bit. So that was the main point of being Diddy for that boss, is just uh, being able to leave the boss fight, get his blueprint right there, because unlike in DK64 Randomizer, we have to be Diddy Kong to grab the, whoa, whoa. the red blueprints. DK64 has a randomizer. <laughs> Insane. Very well, right, maybe. Let me try to see where I'm going here. Yeah, very nice. There we go. Some really bad camera flips associated with the out of bounds is because obviously the game is not expecting you to go out of bounds, so. Here's a nice little torch push for you. <laughs> yeah, so, th so that's the void out to teleport us back to the start of the level because we can't pause and exit. And just, fortunately, there's those void zones everywhere in the game, and it's typically not very hard to find one and then warp back to the start of the level just by going out of bounds on one of the few walls that maybe you can clip through. 
Um, it's worth noting that, yes, there's a void zone outside of a lot of walls in this game. So even though we're like, it looks simple, like we're just running out of bounds to our goal, in a lot of places we're strategically avoiding void outs too, which are, can be extremely detrimental. All right, we probably have some time for donations here during this Bosky turn in. Oh, I absolutely have some donations for you then. We have $25 from Brad Harmar, who says, it's so exciting to be in person at GDQ for the first time ever, and I had to donate for one of the best worst games ever made, Donkey Kong 64, <laughs> giving you an oh, banana from the front row. And I believe that's another dollar on the tally. We're, we're watching sound defense, we're watching. And then we have another $25 from Serene Dragon, who says, they're finally here, performing for you. It's the best members of the GDQ. <laughs> <laughs> that's really good. That was, as DK would say, that's okay. It's okay. So right here, Connor is doing a slow swim, mashing the B button, and gets right through the shore. It's called Swim Through Shores. It's how we enter uh, Banana Fairy Island early. And the reason we do that is so that we can get Shockwave early, allowing us to kill a lot of the Kasplats who hold blueprints in this game. Uh, very quickly. Yeah, normally only Tiny is allowed in here, but like a lot of places in the game, any con can access these regions. Yeah, there's nothing actually stopping you as long as you can get out of bounds and through. But it's, it's worth mentioning, there are a lot of ways to get through a wall in this game. Off the top of my head, there's swimming through walls, falling through walls, phase walking, there's skew walking. Um, you can go over the collision, you can go through bad collision, you can swim through shores, uh, am I missing some? Probably, because... Well, you're going to see all of those and more I know. In this There's run. tag barrel storage. There's another one right there. There are literally so many ways to get through a wall in this game. It's unbelievable. That's a really long way of saying there's no walls in this game. <laughs> <laughs> they really... The joke is that walls are a suggestion. They, they really are. <laughs> all right, so coming up, we do have another one of those uh, triple frame perfect phase walks. Do you want to go over the exact inputs for what I'm doing here? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So basically what Connor is doing on his controller is there are three particular frames allowing him to go through this wall. Um, they look like a flick. The first frame is holding down less, a uh, little less than 50% of the magnitude, um, then up fully, and then a neutral frame. Now, in all of that, the Z button needs to be pressed on either the third or fourth Ooh, frame, um, allowing DK to slide through the wall. And this is all timing first, uh, first person presses as well. That was a really great phase walk, by the way. Yeah. The thing about phase walking is that it's a trick you can really get down to muscle memory, but I do think it's one of those tricks too that like, if you miss it, it can be very flustering and kind of hard to rewrite the ship because it's like, it is just like a very simple bit of input. You can just keep trying it repeatedly. So Connor getting uh, one of the blueprints here. I think we have about 33 blueprints in this run. Um, balancing the number of blueprints and golden bananas that you get is uh, fairly important in terms of efficiency for DK64. Yeah, and ideally, there's a lot of places where you can turn in blueprints because you have to find snides, but the snides are different in each level. They all have a different like length of cutscene that plays depending on what level you turn it in. So we ideally want to turn them in in levels where they are not as long. There we go. Right. Yeah. First try. So as you see, sometimes like those are easy first try, and then other times you just sit there and can't get it at all. That was. <laughs> there we go. Very yeah. nice. It it can't be overstated too. Like like navigating these out of bounds is is really difficult because you're working. The camera is actively working against you most of the time, and if you get off in a bad angle, it can be so hard to rewrite where you're going. It's also incredibly difficult to just walk in a straight line playing on Wii U. If anyone else has tried playing games on the Wii U Virtual Console before. So when I, like it's, it could just be very simple to just walk straight from where you clip out of bounds to the gold banana, but having no idea which way the camera is facing when it's pitch black, I don't even know if I'm walking in a straight line. Connor, that's a really weird way of spelling <laughs> Oh yeah, I, we are yeah. Uh, oh, doing Kong. this puzzle wrong, huh? Yeah, I didn't know Kong had a silent O in front of it. Is this still gonna work if he has O first? I guess so. 
All right, so we started with the O there in order to activate the puzzle. So instead of hitting that little diddy face switch at the start of the room, it is faster to just hit a wrong letter. Yeah, it's kind of a cutscene where it takes a long time to raise all the platforms. Um, it's even worse on N64, one of the leggiest cutscenes of the game. All right, so now it's really important that we discuss um, spawn snagging in this game. Essentially, you can get a golden banana where it is stored positionally um, in a room before the room is loaded. The golden banana will be loaded, but not the room. You may have seen the sparkles from the Diddy Golden Banana Connor got just a bit ago here. Um, that was actually when the room was deloaded. You can still see the sparkles of the Golden Banana. Uh, he could have grabbed that while the room was deloaded, and we're going to see here in a second. You'll notice very particular camera movements here in order to not load the room. And this is yet another wall we're just going to walk right through. Not even a Am phase walk, mind you. We just walk through it. What wall? Oh, we loaded. I think I loaded it with Diddy earlier when I was failing the phase walks. So ideally, you just walk in the golden banana there. But I believe I loaded the room at an earlier point. So we have to do this mini game, but fortunately, it's pretty quick. Yeah, especially since we're a normal sized Tiny Kong, you're normally supposed to do this room with Mini Monkey. Um, obviously, we glitched in using the normal model, and we could just easily defeat the enemies that way. Yeah, it's very impressive, but a lot of the time when Mini Monkey is required, you can usually get out of the room just fine. Getting in is usually the challenge. So don't worry, we'll have plenty more spawn snags coming in the run. So more opportunities for more cool tricks. Like this one. There. So oh. if you didn't want to phase walk here, there's this really silly trick called Tiny Guitar Skip where you stand and backflip into that corner and inch yourself ever so closely to the edge of the wall so that you can fall into it. It's, it the trick makes me feel like I'm losing my mind when I do it, because you'll just, you'll just backflip for like 10 minutes and you just hear Tiny just keep making noise. Yeah, there's a very tiny space, and if you go too far, you're just sliding off the wall. Okay, very nice face clip. As long as you just ponytail twirl at a proper angle there into that face, uh, you go right through the wall. A lot of times, going through the wall is just the punchline of uh, every trick in this game. And now, this next golden banana coming up, uh, we're going to hit the gongs, and then normally you would take Diddy's rocket barrel up to the top to grab the golden banana, but I'm going to attempt to chimpy charge away from the last gong and just land on top of the tower before the long cutscene starts. It's really interesting the way that... Oh, here, I'll let this happen first. <laughs> there we go. Nice. Um, it's really interesting because, again, there are so many borderline bananas. Like, there's a lot of routes that would actually go to a completely different area in the same part of the level and get a banana as Diddy and DK. But with Connor's route, um, he's going to go do this one because it's faster for him. It's faster for him overall. And yeah, that, that is what's really interesting about No Levels Early, just between like the different modalities, N64 and Wii U. It's like the routing of Golden Bananas is quite different in many of the levels. There, there's like as many as like six or seven routes for this category, depending on what console you're using and how advanced you want to get with the trickery. Yeah, the other Golden Bananas that you could do in Angry Aztec over by the temple for the five Kongs, we call it the Five Door Temple, uh, I time the differences and it comes down to less than one second. And at that point, it's basically just personal preference on which Golden Bananas you want to get. Uh, and worth noting that we did Donkey Kong's boss as Diddy, and we're going to do Diddy's boss as Donkey. Yeah, there's nothing too fancy about this. You hit him with the barrel three times, so we can do some donations if you want. Absolutely. And I have some great ones. We have $64 from Alta Biscuit, who says $64 for DK64. I'll bump up the donation to $640 total if TDOS says he loves Lanky. Oh no! All the lies for charity. For charity. Tudos, you can do it, dude. I love Lanky Kong. Let's go! <laughs> I don't know why that was so I've hard. I've wanted to hear that for six years. <laughs> I have. You, you should have just said you were going to donate $604 to charity. Oh, yeah, I should have done that. <laughs> I have. Yeah, that's really on you. I have $801 from Earfolds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Morning, Connor75, and everyone at GDQ. Earfolds here. 
I've been watching GDQ events live for 11 years now. You have all brought joy to the people all over the world, and all for a good cause. I'd like to give a shout out to the wonderful DK64 speedrunning community. I've never known a more warm, generous, and welcoming group of people, and it's great to see the game at a GDQ again. Respect to everyone who has contributed to making the NLE route what it is today, and all the frames you've saved along the way. Much love and the best of luck to Connor75. This is going to be a really exciting run. Oh, it was really nice. <laughs> So, uh, here's another way to get out of bounds. <laughs> Getting pushed by the banana of Funky's hut. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. I feel like we clip out of bounds so often. Like, you ki it kind of, like, loses its magic after a certain point. You're like, yep, there's another one. Yep, there's another <laughs> one. Can't go out of bounds here. Well, I think you can. <laughs> I don't think it would help you very no. much. No. <laughs> hey, aren't those enemies in the DK64 randomizer? Dot com. <laughs> I thought it was dot gov. I thought it was dot edu. So Dan skipped there because it saves five seconds. Why not throw an orange into the banana? You'll see me do that a lot more today. And then one other thing to mention about a lot of the clips in the game, what they were saying, is that some things that I'm doing are triple frame perfect and incredibly difficult, and I wouldn't expect new runners to be able to pick up. But a lot of the glitches that I'm doing are actually super, super easy. Like, anyone can go back here, jump in the sand, and then roll into the slope and you flip <laughs> in. There is really nothing else to it other than you roll through the slope there and you will go out of bounds. You should absolutely try this at home. <laughs> yeah, that is one thing you can try at home. If you're in sand, you're damaged, you can roll into a slope and probably go through it. All right, now here's one of my favorite uh, ways to go through a wall coming up. Uh, and it's combined with a uh, gun dive where you slide off in order to swim with your gun, take out your camera. And there's also another really cool trick we're going to be doing as well. Yeah, so here's the one I was talking about. I love so this one. It holds the height of your water. You turn monkey and, hmm, why is the gun facing upwards? That's really weird. I hope, I hope uh, nothing happened, right? Uh... Hmm. Oh that's, oh, that's normal. I walk like that all the time. Wait, wait. Can we just give the stream a visual representation of this? Like, we need to do, like, one of... <laughs> like this. This is normal, right? This is how you do things. Not the best. A few. And the best part is you can go through Rawls IRL if you do the way we walk. Um, don't actually try that, please. So what's happening here is that we've skewed the character kind of on their axis, and uh, their feet have no collision. So... <laughs> <laughs> nice skewed moon kick. Okay, it's worth mentioning. It's harder than it looks um, because you can lose skew by jumping. And now I know what you're thinking. You're watching him jump right now. You can jump out of actions like long jump or like jump out of like DK doing a roll. But if you just like press the A button while nothing else is happening, you lose skew. And it's worth it mentioning. Banjo-Tooie also has skew tricks, but it's the opposite where you can jump as much as you want, but the moment you pick up speed, you lose it. So I, I think it's funny that it's the exact opposite. A very nice matching game from Connor right there. Yeah, fortunately, it's not randomized in this version of Donkey Kong, so I, I knew which ones to hit. <laughs> Thank goodness. Wait, you can randomize Donkey Kong 64? <laughs> How? Dot com? <laughs> DK, have you heard of this? There's a randomizer? <laughs> so again, the whole point of being skewed here is to go through any wall. Like, I know it looked like we could have gone through any wall earlier, but now we can actually just walk through any wall. And the, the limitations uh, do not apply to us anymore, so it's super convenient to be skewed throughout this entire section to just go through every single wall in this temple. So yeah. he's just trying to take the best possible line to get to each of these golden bananas now that he's got skew. Um, we are coming to the end of Angry Aztec here. Um, now, some routes do come back to Aztec, but we will not be. Um, something I would like to explain is this dance skip that um, oh. Connor is about to do. Oh, oh and he's not going for the dance skip. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, there is a dance skip you can do there using a shockwave to extend your hitbox. Um, but uh, there we go. He voided out so we can get back to the start of the level. And that's the end of Aztec. All right, so now we'll go turn in our key two and go to the next level, Frantic Factory, if you want to do some donations during this time. 
absolutely. And we have $25 from Captain of Garbage, who says, greetings from the Donkey Kong 64 randomizer community. Good luck on the run, Connor, and a morning to the Donkey Kong on co-commentary. He looks a bit familiar somehow. Morning. We also have $5 from DJ Metals, who says, so happy to see DK64 back in the marathon. Truly one of the games of all time. I'll donate another $5 to see Connor do a backflip during chunky phase of K. Rule. <laughs> <laughs> Here's to all the, oh, banana. Backflip is going to be tough with his headset on. I'll why, break something. Why would he ask you to backflip? That's so <laughs> yeah, strange. Yeah, that's so weird. Yeah, is there like a story like, there? Yeah, I think the, I think I the know. next thing is going to be like someone's going to donate if he gets hit by uh, K. Rule at the end. How weird, because we have another $25 donation from Connor M, who says, Hey all, been watching GDQ for the past decade now, and as I was diagnosed with stage 3 cancer in late 2023, GDQ has taken on a whole new meaning to me. The amount of appreciation I have for everyone involved has only skyrocketed. Massive shout outs to the runners, tech crew, hosts, and my amazing partner, Amy, for keeping my, me stable during my treatment. Hey, Connor, been practicing your chunky back flips during the final fight? <laughs> <laughs> of course. Wow, another mention of this backflip. That's so strange. Is Connor going to like do a backflip or something? I'm excited for this. So Connor's about to do a, uh, a little dance skip here. There we go. So he was able to set Tiny up on the saxophone pad there so that Squawks would drop the golden banana in an area where the floor uh, value of the golden banana is uh, such that you can just dance skip it very easily by ponytail twirling off of the ledge and then grabbing the banana. Another route variation worth mentioning is that Connor is getting DK's bongo GB here before he enters fa uh, factory. And Ooh. actually, there's a lot of routes that will get this after factory. So again, just like, it, it's crazy how many different ways I've seen this game in this route, being routed, rather. No, I, I just forgot gold bananas. I need to get this. I don't have 15 yet. <laughs> You'll also notice, like, Connor adjusting himself on the instrument pads. That's very purposeful in order to get Squawks to drop the banana directly on him. Uh, something else to quickly mention here is that um, you can actually go through the wall and glitch around these B-lockers, but um, doing that as Vanden Noel's early, you have to clear him before entering the level. All right, so now I'm going to be doing a somewhat tricky section here at the start of Factory, going out of bounds, and then I'm going to attempt to open up a cage that is attached to a gold banana for Tiny from out of bounds by walking under it, and uh, my... In order to know if I've gotten it or not, I need the audio cue of listening to the cage. So if you guys can maybe be quiet for uh, 10 seconds. There we go. We got it. Very nice. And now um, this is kind of like a spawn snag. Where, where is it? Where is it? Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. I know. <laughs> We're looking for the, the glitters of the banana. I don't trust myself. This is really bad. There we go. There we go. <laughs> I mean, that is actually a spawn seg. It's not loaded yet. And now it's loaded. The only reason we can do that is because of the cutscene that plays at the beginning of the level your first time entering. Otherwise, the banana is not loaded. All right, just spawning the production room banana for Diddy for a little bit later. Some of the production room GBs have timers on them when you activate the switch, but luckily Diddy's doesn't, so we can hit it and then worry about it later. All right, and now we're going to use Larry here to achieve his number one purpose is to free everyone's favorite Kong, Chunky. We have a very quick relevant donation if you would like it. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I have $50 from Beninach, who says, move over, Donkey Kong. Chunky is the true leader of the Kong family. <laughs> uh, very what nice zinger. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that zinger loves trolling. All right, so now we're going into the boss fight for Mad Jack. And since we already did those boss cutscene uh, 
entrances at the very start of the run during the intro story glitch. Uh, I'm not going to have a cutscene here to watch for Mad Jack. I'm going to go right into it. So what? So what Connor is going to be attempting to do here is a standardized set of movement that gets Mad Jack to nine jumps on the first phase, eleven on the second phase, uh, twelve on the third phase, uh, thirteen on the fourth, and fifteen on the fifth phase. So there's a preset number of jumps for Mad Jack. Um, you might be wondering about the switch locations for Mad Jack. Um, they can be manipulated based on the position of Mad Jack and your Kong near the end of each phase. Um, that is basically what's being done here a bit. All right. One more thing to mention as well, um, the reason why Connor moves around a specific way is to make Mad Jack do fast jumps. If you're on the pillar that Mad Jack is jumping to next, he will do a slow jump and it will obviously take more time. But if you move to a square he's not jumping to or into his square itself, unless it's the fourth or fifth phases, then he'll do a fast jump. And obviously it's a speed run, we want to make sure he jumps fast as, as uh, many times as possible. Definitely one of the more difficult bosses in the game, both casually and in the speed run. I would argue this is the most difficult boss. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, for sure. I could see that. So you might see Connor's changing up his movement a little bit because Mad Jack is now starting to uh, focus more on Tiny and just go straight for her rather than um, Tiny kind of chasing him in a way. Yeah, for the first three phases, Mad Jack jumps in a circle to get to Tiny, but in phases four and five, he just jumps always, he always jumps straight at Tiny with no circles. Ooh, that was... <laughs> <laughs> Those are a little Ooh. closer than I normally like them to be. Calculated is what that was. All right, last phase. You'll see Connor moving in a bit of an hourglass shape here in order to get a good ratio of fast to slow jumps. No matter what in these last two phases, he's going to get some slow jumps um, using the strat, um, but this is the best way to optimize them. There is a way to get always fast jumps, but um, oh it's God. not really good for manipulating the switch, so a lot of runners don't do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and throughout that whole time, I was just counting the Mad Jack jumps so that I know when he was going to end uh, his cycles, because it is the same number of jumps every time. That was a fairly clean fight. That was actually horrible clap. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah, very difficult, boss. And now we're going to grab the headphones over here because uh, from the main menu mode glitch at the start, we don't start with any instrument ammo, unfortunately. Just like, I mean, we've been grabbing regular ammo as well and crystals throughout the run that we've been using, and the headphones will come in handy later. Um, something to note, when you use an instrument on an instrument pad in the game, the game does not care whether you have instrument ammo or not. That's why we were able to play instruments on the pads earlier, even though we had zero and instrument power. And that is the cage there that we opened out of bounds as lasagna. You're not going to play DK Arcade? No, he's just going to go through okay, it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should have played DK Arcade. Now, once again, we could take Mini Monkey in here, but let's just do more phase walks. So Connor is going to be doing this really terrible hit detection dart board. <laughs> this is this deserves like a medal for how bad the hit detection is, but Connor is absolutely smoking it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> there we just sit here. Some parts of that board are just like atrocious. <laughs> All right, we got a big trick coming up with Lanky Kong. Who? Oops, we'll try again. Uh, it's because I said his name, huh? <laughs> um, oh, Lobster, right. Yes, yes. Um, so there is a trick called Tag Barrel Storage in which you take your Kong and you trick the game into thinking that the Kong is in the barrel, but in reality, they have fallen out of the barrel. It has some really interesting properties that you're able to take advantage of depending on how you go about getting tag barrel storage. For Lanky, he, get, he does a rank stand, allowing him to um, 
walk through walls when he's in tag barrel storage. Um, this is actually going to be a two, a double frame perfect trick. One for the skid jump link he's going to do, and one for um, the actual start of the orang stand, which will need to be coordinated with touching the tag barrel initially. Yeah, this is a very difficult trick. It can't be overstated. And it is a spawn stag, so... Connor is specifically trying to keep the camera away from the piano game room. And I'm going to use the gamepad for this because this trick is easiest with the gamepad <laughs> and not the regular N64 controller. And I do have an audio cue once I get the trick, which is why people are being quiet right now. Otherwise, I can't count the, the lanky noises, which is my reference for how far to go. When he gets it, you'll be able to hear him walk around. Like, we're not kidding when we say this is not an easy trick at all. Yep, absolutely. If you ever watch a TAS of this game, they do tag barrel storage everywhere. That was close. That was close. That was one frame off. Really close. <laughs> we believe, Kyle. Let's go. You got this, dude. You got this. Oh, very nice. And when you hear the noise and he's in there, it's one frame off. There we go. Okay. It's quiet. There, there we nice. go. All right. There is another, there is the spawn snag we were talking about earlier. So that is the golden banana for this piano game that normally Lenky would spend quite a bit of time doing. Actually, believe it or not, even longer than that a couple of minutes I spent getting the trick. That is an incredibly long mini game, and when you get that trick quickly, uh, it saves a ton of time. Yeah. So it nav he remember Connor has to navigate out of bounds on that tag screen in order to get that golden banana. Very, very difficult. Although, honestly, getting the tag barrel storage is the hard part. The out-of-bounds navigation is just hold 19 lanky noises down left. <laughs> yeah. Which, <What'd> you do? <laughs> <laughs> which is really not that hard. <laughs> and then you do two backflips to the left. So the hard part is getting that tag barrel storage in the first place. And fortunately, there's a relatively simple uh, the sequence of inputs. You can just do the same every time to get to the gold banana. I frequently count lanky noises. I can't even count to 19. That's okay, Donkey Kong. <laughs> I can only count to 16. It's also the number game. The number game used to be in this run, but um, obviously got routed out. We got another dance skip right here. Just further exploding our monkey. Oh, here's a cool little trick. We're gonna do a chunky to get this golden banana. 
instead of actually doing what we're supposed to do. Just do a skid jump, jump aerial. So the skid jump's cool because you can basically, if you jump and turn around at the same time, you'll have like a skid, but the game thinks you won't have jumped, so you can do another jump out of it. Um, it's a little bit difficult to do, so we'll just do the normal way. Well, normal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, Wait, you, the, that's the normal but way. But I, I did normally as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> really, did you also find that hidden rainbow coin in Fungi Forest as a kid? Yeah. I don't need proof. I'm just, I'm telling you, it's my proof. Vibes is proof. So I, I, I did try to use a certain uh, camera angle there entering production room here because it is on a cycle with these spinning arms. So I try to go in with a certain camera angle to load the room at a certain point so that when I use warp four with Chunky here, it, the arms will be right in front of him. Like so. Nice. They give you so much time for this banana, it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, 90 seconds. <laughs> or 99, right? 99. Yeah, it's 99. The, the intention is that <laughs> someone's going to really mess up trying to climb to the golden banana, but obviously we hit warp four before um, even getting up here in the first place. Well, th so the way I played this game as a kid is I followed my strategy guide, and that would uh, go through each Kong individually. So I would do all of the DK golden bananas, then do all of the Diddy ones. So by the time I was Chunky, I'd already done everything I had work for. What did your strategy guide say about Chunky uh, Chunky and Dogadon 2? Uh, it said you needed Hunky Chunky, for sure. Did it say you had to Primate Punch? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, well, when we get to Dogadon 2, you'll see for sure um, that do uh, Primate Punching is not the fastest way. Yeah, there's definitely a better way to go about it. Um, but um, in the meantime, we're going to finish up production room here. Um, I, and honestly, this is one of my favorite soundtracks in the game right here. Shells Grand Kirk Hope. Hope you're watching. Yeah, it's half the reason I loved this game as a kid was the dynamic soundtrack changing everywhere in the level. I thought it was such a neat feature and carries over in games like Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie too, which makes them feel that much more special. All right, we're just going to clip right here <laughs> through this corner. Yeah, I, I failed it the first time, but it's, <laughs> again, that's something you can do at home. It's very easy to just walk in the corner there. And I mean, as bounce. Donkey Kong, that is literally something I do at home. <laughs> All right, Connor's just going to void out here. I also do that at home. Does, <laughs> DK does, in fact, void out. And there goes Frantic Factory. It's maybe time for a couple donations before we enter Jungle Japes again. Oh, I have so many for you. We have $21 from Armadillo64, who says, We all know OK and Oh, Banana. What are everyone's other favorite voice clips from DK64? I love when Tiny Kong spins and says, and excuse me for trying this. Wee! <laughs> <laughs> Let's get that Jet Set Radio car incentive met. And we have a lot of movement on that. Uh, it is almost there. We have a little over $2,000. So I think that we can hit it by the end of the run. So 2,000 old bananas, got it. <laughs> we can get more than 2,000 old bananas. <laughs> oh, banana, oh, banana, oh, banana. <laughs> We have a $15 donation from Larry the Latipus, who says, Connor's here. He's the best guy. His speed run tricks are quick and fly. He doesn't like bananas. They are gooey. DK is fun, but it's not banjo too. <laughs> <laughs> Master lyricist Larry there. Oh, Larry. <laughs> we also have a incredible $576 donation from Alta Biscuit. <laughs> and they say, here's the remaining $576 to get the donation up to the $640 as promised. Sorry, Tudos, and good luck on the rest of the run, Connor. All right, so now we have set up another skew walk here that we're going to attempt to maintain for but, a lot of jungle jades but here. But why small Kong lie down? Why? <laughs> Sleepy Kong. Just like one of these, you know? <laughs> Every Kong after Skew becomes Sleepy Kong. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. This level has a lot of bananas hidden directly behind gates. So, you know, when walls are optional, those aren't really gates. Yeah, we do lose the Skew if we enter a loading zone, so we're going to try to do as much as we can here without entering loading zones first. But again, we have this cool banana just sitting over here, and what do you think we're going to do? 
Mm, just right walk through the front. <laughs> I like how it opens for you. <laughs> so yeah, you it, <laughs> it has to let us out. All right, so now we should have um, the various uh, Kong cage dance skips coming up. I think there's about three or four of them. Yeah, here we go. This part's so trippy when there's like nothing below you and you're just running on the air. Yeah, it's cool because DG64 maintains your height while going out of bounds, unlike the uh, Banjo series. You just kind of fall. Yeah, and that's what makes the out of bounds so powerful in this game, is it? By maintaining that height when you clipped out of bounds, you can go wherever you want. Very nice. Now, one more golden banana for Lanky here. There we go. Can, can, can you just do that again? You want just, me to do oh, that again? Orangutan. We just wanted Hold to on. see that. We jumped through this mountain first. Ooh, look at this. <laughs> hey, hey, Zerulda, can you just mimic that? I, I would have to. <laughs> the answer is no, I can't. <laughs> Probably kick a couch. Oh, this is a. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I should try that. I love this this clip personally. A nice skid jump, long jump into that horizontal black line that you see right next to the torch will lend you a nice little clip. But you know, Lanky's, Lanky's all lanky and whatnot. There, there we, we go. go. And it's um, worth noting that if you didn't want to do that, you can jump on top of the torch, get into a rang stand, and just jump over the wall. Nope. Like, it is super simple. The wall hitbox is very low. Yeah, like, like suspiciously low, considering they let you get up on the torch. Ah, you might see Connor doing rang stand jumps here. Basically, he's interrupting uh, an rang stand jump uh, around the middle of the height of his jump to gain a lot of speed. This is like the second fastest form of movement in the game, actually. Um, normal for, for movement. For normal movement, for normal movement. Not like active moves like Rocket Barrel or anything like that. Welcome yeah, every Kong kind of has their own unique way of going fast. Like for Donkey Kong, he's the fastest of the Kongs because he has that role. Um, Diddy Kong does somersaults into like tail spins tiny long jumps, chunky long jumps, and can also maintain speed with spins, and Lanky has O-stand and long jumps. My note is that we don't really go into Golden Banana bonus barrels throughout the game. They're, un unfortunately, they're not really that fast, so um, I think there's two or three of them at most. Yeah, we mainly are just going into the ones that are like the absolute fastest for us. Uh, one thing I guess we can throw out there as well, um, I think Connor mentioned earlier that the controls on the Wii U are worse. Um, that's kind of an understatement. The input delay on Wii U is so bad. It's like <laughs> half a second input delay. Yeah, when Nintendo 64 runners pick up my controller and try to do anything on the Wii U, uh, they're usually horrified at how much input delay I just regularly have to deal with on a daily basis. I can confirm. It was pretty horrifying. You, yeah. should, you should show the camera if you have a good spot. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, Wii U Virtual Console, and it seems like a lot of Wii U games in general, have input delay introduced to help with the gamepad. Um, and that only ends up being really frustrating for a lot of things. But yeah, I am using just a normal Nintendo 64 controller because that's that's what I'm used to, and I have it connected into a Wii remote using a special adapter. God's intended controller. So uh, there's a cool little dance skip we're gonna do here with this uh, beaver. We're gonna bother this beaver. He's a little farther away than usual, but that gone. zinger almost stole that from you. Yeah. <laughs> And then one nice thing about us like having multiple visits at this level is that we've hit a lot of the warp points, so we can warp straight back to the beginning and leave without having any complicated glitching to get there faster. All right, so that's the end of Japes. We're, we're done with Japes, yeah. Aztec, and Factory. Where are we going next? 
Probably some donations. Yeah, probably some donations. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what level is that? <laughs> I think it's the level that I'm about to bring you to right now. I have ten dollars from three raccoons in a coat who says "Eat em, bulk em. Right? Or uh, am I thinking of another N64 rare game? Hmm. Oh, that's Conquer. Oh, Conquer's bad for a day, right? <laughs> we have twenty-five dollars from Laxon who says "Monkey glitch through wall." Monkey do a crawl. I hope monkey doesn't fall. This is my favorite event of all. Go AGDQ. Oh, that was really good. Thank we you so much. We should just turn all these donation like <laughs> readings that we get into a rap at the end or something. Oh, oh, that'd be so good. I have uh, one here. Can't quite make it a rap, but I have fifty dollars from Nico, who says, "In the jungle, Donkey Kong sped. Banana peel scattered. Fear widespread. With a barrel in hand and a trail of sand, fast as lightning through walls he tread." Very nice, man. This game having the DK rap really inspired a lot of lyricism. Yeah, we got a lot of we got a lot of um, a lot of poems going out. You'd love to see it. Yeah, time this for game it. really inspires the arts. Yeah, time for any more? Uh, yeah, one more. Great. Uh, I have twenty five dollars here from Chucky Fly, who says, "Good luck on all the skews and banana hoarding. I appreciate that you let B Locker do his job properly, keeping you out of the levels early. Good luck and much love from an old friend and a longtime fan." Oh, thank you. Chucky Fly is. One of my very first viewers ever. That means a lot. All right, Gloomy Galleon. Yeah, so we're gonna start out surely by walking through this tunnel and going the way the game wants us to go, right? Of course. LOL, JK. <laughs> <laughs> so what Connor is attempting to do here is he's attempting to do another spawn snag for the cannon game that's usually to the right of you when you enter um, Gloomy Galleon. You see the sparkles over there. That's what he's going for. Gotta be very careful here. There we go. Oh. That was the cannon game room goal. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's hard to see what's going on, which, again, it makes it hard for me as well to try and figure out where the golden banana is, but that was the cannon game golden banana. If you're curious, like, the, the spots the bananas are on the wall are essentially where they fly out from when you've completed the mini game, and the game's like, okay, here's your reward. Um, they just happen to be there if the room's not loaded. <laughs> and we can uh, kind of strategically load and unload the room as long as we know what's going on, so it's really cool. Yeah, you've got golden bananas ranging from being in complex minecarts to being in a chest. Another cool thing about being out of bounds, what you saw Connor did there earlier, is like you don't really understand the orientation of the levels until you see what happens. Like you didn't, I, I didn't know like the five door ship area was directly behind the portal until I saw that someone do that clip. Yeah, there's a couple, especially in this level because the water connects so much. Like you can clip through one wall in one area and you'll swim straight into another area. And it's like very surprising to see that the level is laid out in such a way. It also just feels really satisfying as a runner to do something like that for such a large level. Yeah, this is like, vertically, this level is huge. It's also really satisfying to see Chunky in this tiny boat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Going really fast in this tiny boat. So every Kong can get into the boat, but I believe one of them is slower than all the others. Yeah, me. <laughs> it's okay, DK. We forgive you. Yeah. DK just never got his license. Dude, DK has a slower boat speed because he will normally drive the boat during the seal race, and based on the balancing of that race, they need to slow the boat down a bit, whereas in Puff Toss, we have a much faster boat, so the, you can do this with any of the four non-DK Kongs. And it's worth noting that all of these like stars that are around this big bloke right here, um, they are always in the same position. Yeah, it's really nice seeing, like, you go straight to the stars here, and Connor, like, knows where they're going to spawn. He's just going to go straight there, even if they're, like, in the same spot, so he doesn't have to go all the way around the fish. It would be cool if these were, would you say, randomized in the Season 3 settings for DK64? Yeah, randomized. randomized. Wait, random? You can randomize this game? There's a DK64 randomizer? Dot com? No, dot edu. Dot gov? Oh. Uh, oh, no, I think it's at Gmail. <laughs> yeah, that was it. You can probably just go to Connor's Twitch stream to find out more about dk 6 randomizercom Nice fight. Right. Very that, was nice. Really, that was a really clean fight. You'll really notice uh, he drove in such a way into Puff Top's mouth right at the end because that's where the key drops. Let's see, you got it? It might have been too far. Yeah, that, that looked like you got a good amount of... 
Oh, yeah, oh, nice. yeah, dude. I love him in the really boat. Really nice. <laughs> Chunky's just vibing in the boat, dude. Yeah. I love that you can't actually get on that ledge coming out of Trough and Scoff right there. <laughs> so that portal is still there. Yeah. The, the game, when it doesn't have something visible, it literally just hides it. You can still actually interact with it. So we'll see Connor making his way over to the cactus area here. That's what we call that green thing over there. Basically a cactus. I don't know what else you'd call it. The green thing? The that green, green thing. thing? He's going to be using the expansion of the hitbox with Shockwave to kill that because Splat. Uh, basically creates a column of uh, attack when you do a shockwave. Fun fact, I don't think we actually utilized that proper until recently. and We were just yeah. dummies and would climb up to the top of the cactus and, and kill them that way. there's very little space up on that cactus, so if the crush or the splat hits you, you'll almost always fly straight off. Yeah, I think it probably is still faster to shoot him with your gun, but I got tired of being <laughs> thrown off over and over. Also, that gate meant nothing to us. It wasn't even there. I like how there's numbers on the gates as if, like, that has any meaning to the player. They also don't really line up with any way that you could numerically assign to the Kongs, because why is Tiny door five? Shouldn't that be Chunky, because he's the last Kong you collect? Maybe the game's trying to tell us Tiny's the worst Kong. Maybe. Well, we know it's not Chunky. We know, and we know it is Linguini, so no, that, that makes it, no, no, no. It, it could be Linguini, but it's definitely not Lanky. Hey, Liquidity is a great Kong. So I do want to point out this Swim Through Vertical Walls glitch I'm using to get through the gates here, again, is one that is super easy. Anyone can do this. You just go into first person, hold A, and swim through it without touching your control stick. And it is really that easy to go through the walls when you're swimming. You can literally do it from like 12 miles away from the wall. As long as you don't touch the stick during your approach, you'll still go straight through it. Yeah, that's what we were doing uh, last night when we were playing DK64 multiplayer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, it was a mess. <laughs> it's wonderful. Yeah, play, playing this games with a bunch of glitchers on multiplayer, oh man. So if you ever want to impress your friends, it is very easy to go out of bounds in the, in the multiplayer maps in this game as well. And if you really want to frustrate your friends, keep going out of bounds in the <laughs> multiplayer because every time you void out, you get a health Yeah, we, we learned you get a free <laughs> health <gen>. refill by, <laughs> by going out of bounds in multiplayer. That way you can just play multiplayer well, for the rest of your life. If you get a free health refill, it sounds to me like it's intended. Again, yeah, no point in getting in the on-guard box when you could just swim through the wall there and get the gold banana this way instead. Fun fact, that's one of the largest gold bananas in the game. Yeah, it is huge. It's weird because you're not, like, tiny here, so, like, why is it so big? Imagine it's second to pound the X, right? Yeah. Oh, I believe so. Yeah. Sadly, pound the X is far too long to do an Emily. Maybe 101, we'll get into GDQ someday. Maybe. Hint, hint. <laughs> hint. Hint. Yeah, I want to give 101 a shout out real quick. Um, for everything that's crazy about NLE, is like, it's, like, it's like 10 times crazier in 101. And that is the full completionist category of the game, where we will be collecting everything. And it's, it is such a cool speed run. It's one of my favorites of all time. So I just want to plug that if you like this run. I want to shout out that Kasplat for that incredible RNG. It's not RNG. <laughs> the, the slam? Well, I mean, it's it's not. It, it, you can be pretty consistent with hitting him with the aerial attack there to prevent him from doing his shockwave, and then you can release your shockwave and almost n almost never get knocked off. So we need end guard here for one banana. Just another one hidden in the chest. Coming back to 101 really quick. Um, it is a five hour and some minutes run. Um, it's probably not going to actually get into GDQ, but um, it's a really good watch. Um, and doing one on one percent five in some minutes is really fun to watch. So definitely recommend if you're really into uh, speedruns of this game. Yeah, and um, like 101 actually is a little different on N64 versus Wii U2. So you get to see some really cool exclusive glitches depending on which one you're watching. And we actually have so Connor is the Wii U world record holder for 101, and Zerolda is the N64 world record holder for 101. So they're both here today, which is cool. All right, here is our first time visiting Snide and turning in our blueprints. And do you know what sound we get when we turn in these blueprints? 
I think we should have the whole <laughs> crowd say it whenever the game says it. All right, yeah, everybody, get ready. Clear your voice. It's time. Oh, oh banana. banana. Oh, banana. Oh, banana. Oh, banana. Don't worry, we're doing that 29 more times today. <laughs> <laughs> That's 29 more dollars for charity. Yeah, in the one one run, it's great because you turn them all in at the end, so it's a really big bonanza of old banana. Yeah, it's or, mentioned earlier. Oh, go ahead, sir. Or, or is that still true? I, I, it's been a bit. Uh, yeah, they're still at the end. Okay. And as we said, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's still there. <laughs> All right, so that's Gloomy Galleon. There's one more golden banana out here that we're going to grab. Uh, normally, you would hit the switch with Chunky to open up this gate, get into Mini Monkey so that Tiny can fit through it. But of course, it is a wall you can just swim through. And it's perfectly within our phase angle. <laughs> All right, so now we have one of the most interesting enter level splits in the entire run, enter fungi. There's just a lot that can be done uh, in this enter fungi split. Um, a lot of it is going to focus on, um, uh, let's see here. Another swim through shores. Swim I'm through just shores smashing B right here. Yeah. Getting some spare bananas here. Nice caged banana here. Now, it's worth noting that if you were to accidentally jump into the cave or cage here, it would actually be a it would be a soft lock. So yeah, you gotta you, be careful. You can't pause oh. exit because <laughs> the pause is disabled. Remember. Yeah, so that's what makes this category really dangerous. Like we said before, is that there's a couple bananas that really put you in harm's way if you don't grab them correctly, and there's a couple strats that put you in a really bad position that you cannot get out of. So Connor's getting Lanky's cage banana here is just going to use a slow swim and uh, swim through vertical wall properties and give Lanky some brain damage right there. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I love that they just like have to smack their head against the floor till they get it. Yeah, successful brain damage. Yep. Good job. So we're going to turn in key four here, but uh, this is going to be a little bit more interesting than the other uh, key turn in cutscenes because there is a golden banana for Lanky in here that normally you would have to get into the orang stand sprint barrel run all the way to a switch, and then run all the way back to the golden banana, but maybe you have guessed it by now, but there is in fact a wall in here that we can clip through. There's no walls in here. <laughs> <laughs> I love that was a first, first try phase <laughs> walk, that was so good. <laughs> it is yeah. truly incredible how little the walls matter. All right, so and now we have a little chunky section here. We finally get to see uh, our guy Hunky Chunky for Pound the X Golden Banana. As well as his caged Golden Banana. Chunky's not gonna get as much brain damage. He's, he's a lot bigger. Yeah, so being Hunky Chunky is helpful here because Hunky Chunky is even easier to clip out of bounds in basically everywhere in the game. So getting into this cage gold banana, we can do the... Where am I going? Yeah, Hunky is by far the most broken character. He's also the fastest. Even faster than a rank sprint. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. Oops. Oh. Oops. You have to do that again. <laughs> We're around a crystals. It's like a shark Yikes. fin swimming. There we go. There we go. Yes. So he re-enters the water uh, out of bounds here and is going to go ahead and get the Pound the X Golden Banana uh, again from under it uh, in order to skip the dance. And here we go. He's going to be entering Fungi Forest. Hmm. 
All right, maybe time for a couple donations as we enter Fungi Forest. Absolutely. We have $25 from Nick O, who says, I'm so excited to see Donkey Kong 64, one of the games of all time. It has levels, characters, and collectibles, and it is objectively a video game. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely Thank one of the most video games of all time. Thanks Definitely to Connor75 for sharing this game that everyone agrees exists and is playable from start to finish. Good luck. We have $20 from Kyle the Pug, who says, good luck to the man, the myth, the legend, Connor, on speedrunning this wonderful Nintendo 64 game. Hope everyone has an excellent morning. 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 We also have $20 from Yamamo, who says, loving this speedrun. It is bananas. Also, Connor and Couch, what Donkey Kong game and category is easiest for beginners interested in speedrunning? The coolest thing about this game is that all three of the main categories have plenty of tutorials, routes, guides available for them. So really, whatever you want to do, it is a category you can start with. Just please don't do glitchless because <laughs> beginners try to play that game, then they realize they have to do arcade and then never touch the game again. So don't do that one. Time for a couple more. Uh, yeah. We have $10 from Sam Loves Beans, who says, why does Donkey Kong like bananas? Because they have appeal. Uh... So we are using the skew glitch here to quickly just be able to swap to Lanky and enter this room, because this door is not one that you can just easily clip through, so skew allows us to go through it. Wait, it's hard to get through a wall in this game? Yeah. <laughs> but that was a door, not a wall. Mm, must be the caveat. And then Chunky's Kasplat is conveniently directly below us. Noticing that half moon on the door there, you're actually normally supposed to be able to get this Kasplat at nighttime because this level's gimmick is that there is a defined day and night which changes the layout of the level and also the places you can go. Um, but actually, we can just jump down there. So now we got Diddy, he's going to be heading over to his Kasplat inside of the giant mushroom. And then we'll be making our way over to the Owl Reese area, or the Owl Tree. So uh, worth mentioning that one of the biggest changes that happens on Wii U happens in this level. You wouldn't see it in this category, but the Rabbit Race, which is of course very notorious in this level, um, that Lanky does, is much harder on Wii U, and it's because the Wii U um, emulator, or whatever is running it, I forget what it's called, um, has, uh, it, it removes the lag from the game, and the game is not reconfigured for the lack of lag, so some stuff that's depending on the lag is depending on something that's no longer there, and one of the things that is is the rabbit's actual, like, racing speed is affected by lag, and so the rabbit becomes extremely fast on Wii U, and if you make a single mistake, you die. Luckily, we can skip him now, though. Yeah, and the 101% speedrun, we can actually do the thing that Connor did in Factory, which is the uh, tag barrel stores to spawn snag the golden banana. Because it's like right under the rabbit's house. I just love doing that trick five hours into a speedrun. Yeah, it's, it's piano game skip on steroids. It is, it's yeah, terrifying. it is really, really tricky. And um, there, there's also, uh, Tiny has her own skip in this level. Called Beanstalk Skip. That's also really hard. All right. But anyway, Tiny is still on her way to the limbo contest, skewed here, and <laughs> conveniently enough, she can walk out of bounds here, which gives us the perfect height to be able to backflip into here. We're just gonna ask for some quiet here. Yeah. So I, I do use an audio cue in this room with the music. All right, let's try and get the bean. Uh, uh, oh, oh, no! Oh, you messed no. up! Oh, he didn't get oh, the bean. Reset. Dang, no bean. At least we got the golden banana. So Fungi is definitely one of the more straightforward levels in the levels early, I'd say. Um, just kind of do most of the area, like get one or two bananas in each of the areas. And most of the um, level consists of just moving around the level because yeah, it's so large. It's so spread out. Oh, is it banana time? Yeah, so it now is. Tiny has officially collected all of her blueprints in the route, and she's going to be turning all of them in. All right, chat and crowd, I hope you're ready again. Are we ready, everyone? 
Always one more than you think it is. <laughs> oh, brother. All right, so now no, we're going up. <laughs> into the next boss fight. Nice. Okay, this, this is my personal favorite boss. This is your favorite? It's one yeah. of the longest bosses in this the is entire a, yeah. run. Yeah, I love this boss because, like, you have to do so many different things. Like, I know, like, the other bosses kind of just have, like, five phases of the same thing over and over, but this one just changes it up. It's great. Yeah, the walls of fire, and <laughs> it's going to be weird without Chunky, though. Yeah, I don't know how we can hunky chunky without I was, chunky. I was gonna ask how you were gonna navigate that, but uh, we'll yeah. figure it out. Yeah, he'll show you in a second. Yeah, that's no problem. And he's dead. What? what? <laughs> oh, okay, the boss is over. <laughs> oh. Why is chunky there? Yeah, wait, weren't chunky? we Donkey Kong? We were. Wait, I wanted to see this boss fight. Why did we skip it? That's it. That is the Dogadon 2 fight. Who needs him? Man, that Dogadon was really done quick. <laughs> so basically, by putting a barrel down in front of DK and Donkadon, uh, when Donkadon attacks both DK and um, the TNT barrel on the same frame, uh, it pulls up the end of the fight. <laughs> Why does it do that? I don't know. Ask Balam or ask, something. Ask yeah. the Balam 96. Quick, quick shout out to Balam, uh, Balam, who is a big glitch hunter slash tasser for this game, who has like a 15 minute explainer video on why that works. You should check it out. It's really, really cool. He and knows this game to a level that nobody should. And incidentally, one of the main devs of dk 64 randomizercom There is no wall there, by the way. That's another uh, trick you can just do if you boot up DK64, there is no wall, and they patched that in the Japanese and Palaver. They, they didn't even like, they didn't even like fix a hitbox, they just put a box there. <laughs> yeah, they added a box there. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's another thing that's worth noting, it's like on JP, like Japanese and Pal, you can't really do these swim through vertical walls tricks, these face swims, um, because it was patched out. Yeah, and unlike a lot of other, other like early speed games, like DA64 is the fastest on the uh, US version. Mm -hmm. That was the uh, first version released. Well, this is going to be another way of getting skew with the Kong by just swimming out of bounds and getting damage in a particular orientation with the Kong. <laughs> I love that while skewed, the gun still fires normally, but you're pointing upwards. <laughs> so good. Right, and that's, that's Fungi, fungi Forest. forest. <laughs> right. Very nice. So 62 bananas. Uh, we're making great progress towards our goal of 100. We actually have a tough jump coming up with Diddy here to get across to the waterfall. Well, there's an asterisk there. Tough on Wii U. There we go. Ah, I got it anyway. Oh, uh, 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 did he? Eventually. Did he? <laughs> so N64 has a mechanic to speed up your Kong relative to how much lag is on screen. So when you're playing the game on N64, it doesn't really seem like it's lagging if you're playing casually. But you can take advantage of that by... Um, it, it basically, you can make your Kong go further than the game expects you to go. Um, and we can use lag to jump really far to make that gap really easy. Yeah, worth noting that that um, also happens in other Rareware games of the era. Like, I know for Conker's Bad Fur Day, you get higher jumps on N64 just because the lag kind of extends it just ever so slightly higher. Oh, that's cool. What about Tui? There's a Tui? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, two. Two, two dose. Two what? Two, two dose. Two dose? Two doses. Tui? Dose of what? Hmm. Dose, dose? Anyway, we're going to level six. Yeah, it's time for some <laughs> donations. I can absolutely give you some donations. We have $250 from Sock Drawer Pangolin, who says, I have a lot of memories playing this with my dad. He has terminal cancer now, so GDQ is personal this year. Thank you for all you do. Uh, thank you so much for that. We have $50 from Duck, 
who says, Hey everyone, Duck and Lemon here. Shout out to my number one commentator for finally getting this amazing run into AGDQ. This game is cool, but uh, where are all the Jinjos? <laughs> They're there, you just can't see them. <laughs> we have $25 from Nintendo Sarah, who says, Morning, Connor75. <laughs> Good luck and great job already. I can't wait until you get back to DK64Randomizer.com races and stop glitching. Much love from the rando community. Morning. Yeah, like 64 bananas. Let's go. That's hey, funny because the, the most common YouTube comment I get on all of my speedruns is people mad at me for glitching and they want to see the game played without glitches. Glitches are cheating. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, luckily, on your YouTube channel, there happens to be all collectibles glitchless, which is like a seven-hour run. It's honestly puts me to sleep playing this game for seven hours glitchless, so I'm never doing that Wait, again. Wait, but does that run get the hidden rainbow coin in Funky Forest? It, it does. I had to redo it. <laughs> 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 which, by the way, so it was in January of 2017, a brand new rainbow coin was found in Fungi Forest. Yep, no one ever found it before, not even the people who claim so in Twitch chat. <laughs> Time for another. Yeah. We have $50 from Day One Combos, who says, DK64 was my whole digital life from age 9 to 10. Happy to donate during this block. The amount of times I've said, oh, banana, in the produce section is embarrassing. <laughs> I remember uh, I got this game from a garage sale when I was a kid, and I didn't realize you needed an expansion pack. So I was so happy to get home. I was like, oh my god, the Donkey Kong game I've never seen before. I put it in the N64, and it doesn't work. You gotta expand, man. I do. I couldn't at the time. Yeah. But luckily, luckily, my neighbors figured out that they needed to give me that, and they ran it down to our house. All right, so Crystal Caves is a fun level because there are rocks that are going to be falling down on us every, like, 20 seconds. So I'm going to be trying to get through all these sections quickly and not have the rocks disrupt me. So first, a little skew to be able to go through walls. Yeah, Diddy can have a little skew as a treat. There you go. Now a little jump here. Very nice. And just to reiterate about skew, um, jumping while not doing some kind of action will take us out of skew, so it's very important. Here's everyone's favorite cutscene. <laughs> Everyone say hello to Kosha. Best NPC in this game. Hi, Kosha. <laughs> Hi, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. I heard that's the type of setting on DK64 Randomizer now. <laughs> you, wait a minute. Settings? Yeah. Randomizer. Wait, Randomizer has settings? Yeah, of course. It's crazy. What kind of things can you set? All right, gonna hope this guy doesn't shockwave while I'm up here. Oh, uh, <laughs> we made it! Nice. <laughs> yeah, this Kasplat is extremely finicky. But we need Lanky to be able to come over here later, so hitting that warp. Shout out to Mad Maze Ball. We don't see it. We just passed the barrel for it. As also a top uh, music track in the game. Probably my favorite music track in the game. It goes so hard for a song that's used twice. And now we're going to do one of the longest golden bananas in the game, the rotating room. So here we're going to be hitting the Kong faces and matching them with each other. Huh. Except, hmm, I'm not very good at this. Uh, you're you're kind of missing the you, Kong faces. I think you're faces. missing, dude. You, you, you got to hit that blue one, I think. No, 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 no. okay. I'm trying. Maybe, no, 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 maybe the gold one? No, you're supposed to simian slam, dude. That's not a simian slam. There that we go. Works. No, cool. That works. Oh. So that's the rotating room without rotating. No rotation. <laughs> All right, so we've said this enough times, but uh, this game has really excellent walls. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, that's something you can do at home. Um, do it in the game, not in real life. <laughs> I, yeah, I cannot recommend I, rolling into walls in real life. Yeah, I, I don't think we actually clarified that until now, so sorry if you bonked your head earlier. A very clean rotating, or uh, DK5 door cabin. Yeah, it's, I don't always kill all of those with only 10 homing ammo, and you have to go pick up the other 10 on the other side of the room. 
Worth noting that homing ammo is something, again, that we get from the main menu moves that we do at the beginning of the run, because that's something you have to unlock all the way in, like, a uh, castle, I think. Or is it in this level? It's, it's fungi forest. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I haven't bought things legit in a long time. There's, like, a weird table of things you can get by watching, like, certain cutscenes at the beginning during main menu moves. Um... Right. If you're ever curious, you can see the tape. Really nice. Good job. Oh, that's a cool strat. That's a good strat. So he grabbed the banana and then died immediately. That was actually a strat used in the 101 TAS um, from 2019. So you're saying Connor is a tasser? <laughs> he didn't use a tool earlier. I don't know if I can legally say that. <laughs> So here we can charge the shockwave through the warp pad and then unleash it as soon as we get over to this side and there's basically zero risk of falling off there doing that strat. All right, we are coming up to a pretty cool trick that involves gun skew. I won't give anything away. Uh, I will say that it does involve Chunky Kong. All the good stuff involves Chunky Kong, though, so... I will... Chunky is pretty awesome, man. Objectively the best Kong? Uh, I don't know about that. I love Lanky. This man... Boo. This man has, like, the greatest vest on, and you're really gonna tell me he's not the best Kong? Yeah. Okay. Lanky he, he, look, I like he, overalls. But he can make overalls. Kremlin's trial for mommy. <laughs> <laughs> nice, dude. He All picks right. up a boulder with it, relative ease. Oh, yeah? Well, Lanky has no style and no grace. <laughs> he does have a funny face. <laughs> but Chunky here, we're going to take over to this area of Crystal Caves and go through a little wall here since we're skewed. And then hopefully make a jump once I get the camera sorted. We're going to try to jump into the room with this golden banana right here. Mm. Mm. Nice. nice. Oh. <laughs> if you jump too far, you land on top of the igloo and then you can't clip in. And if you jump not far enough, then you'll land in the water and lose your skew. So that is somewhat precise to land in the right spot there. Not sure if we explained it properly earlier, but we saw Chunky get hit by a rock there. He didn't, Connor didn't actually take damage. That is another side effect of the main menu moves glitch we did earlier. Oh, here's a, here's a really funny clip. By just jumping into this corner, you can <laughs> yeah. just slip right there into it is. the blue. Uh, ledge clips are another type of clip. I don't know if we've talked about much, but they are another way through a wall. Imagine that. All right. Got so, one more room here in the igloo. And then we got the boss. And this one, normally you have to kill all of the enemies that spawn here to make a baboon balloon pad here there for Lanky to float up, but you can just backflip without it. Again, not a useful ability. <laughs> and that's another dance skip using the height. So the banana is just high enough that if you go like towards the ground and then towards the banana, it'll it'll automatically think that you're like way too high up and then just skip the dance for you. So here's another instance of the levels connecting in really interesting ways. By swimming through this wall, you can actually get right over to the snides area that's usually uh, locked by primate punch. I think it's over. There it is. There we go. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Here we, we go some, again. Some, All right. some more uh, bananas. Yeah, definitely take a drink for this one. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have a second for, uh, for donations if there are some. Well, well wait, 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 wait. We have some oh, bananas. Wait. Oh, wait. We got, I <laughs> forgot. Right. We got a we got two old bananas. Ourselves. The bananas are the donations. We got to make some money for charity. <clears throat> Oh, banana. Oh, that was a good one. Oh, banana. Oh, banana. Oh, banana. Oh, banana. Oh, banana. 
Oh, oh banana. banana. <laughs> All right, that's the seven chaos bananas right there. <laughs> <laughs> We aren't done there, though. You know who else still has blueprints to turn in? Oh. <laughs> Chunky. I guess this cutscene takes forever. Maybe well, one quick donation. What? Did you just punch okay. Snide? Uh, I have one quick donation. Uh, $10 from Emmy, who says, I've always wanted to know who would win in a fight. Teenager on roller skates or a car made of solid steel? Let's find that out by uh, getting that car fight incentive funded. Also, hello to Scout and Annie. And we are only, like, a little under $1,500 from that. So that's, like, you know, not that many bananas. Oh, oh banana. banana. Oh, banana. <laughs> oh, banana. banana. Oh, banana. Oh, banana. Oh, banana. Oh, banana. That's six more dollars for charity. <laughs> so if you collect 1,500 more blueprints, we got it. Easy. Are there 1,500 more blueprints? I, I, I think so. I played this game a couple of times, and I remember there being a lot, so 1,500 sounds right. All right, cool. So unfortunately, the Fungi Forest boss fight had that really cool skip where it was over with in like 10 seconds, but this one is a bit of a slog, and <laughs> it's going to take a couple of minutes. There's no cool skip. We have to hit Army Dillo like four times, so definitely and, a good time for some donations. Um, really quickly, though, definitely note here that we actually have to watch the customer this one. At the beginning of the game when we were doing main menu moves, we, this is one of the cutscenes we couldn't uh, watch earlier, so we couldn't skip this one. All right, you can go ahead with donations. Absolutely. I have $30 from MD LatQP. I believe that's how it is. Uh, they say, let's meet some incentives, get some bananas, and prevent some cancer. And we are, we are getting some more movement on that secret car fight. Let's go. I believe that we can get it met by the end of this run easily. We have $25 from Mad Hatter Matters, who says, I'm so hyped for the DK64 run. It was one of the first games I ever played, so the nostalgia runs deep. Good luck on the run, and let's get some hype for this amazing event. Hype. Donk. Donk. We have $5 from Haven Knight 93 who says, I remember playing this as a kid every day. I used to run to my bedroom every day when I came home from school and turn the N64 on and play this with my brother. Wonder next time we can get the crowd chant, oh, banana, when we turn, we turn blueprints. Morning and good luck, Connor, HK. Thank you, Haven Knight. We have $50 from Oh Hi Mark who says, so happy to be catching the DK64 speedrun during GDQ. When Connor went to Snides to turn in blueprints, the couch started chanting, oh, banana. My two-year-old daughter joined in and it hasn't stopped. <laughs> Good luck to you and all the runners in this year's GDQ. Donation incentive goes to Runner's Choice. We have $250 from NDH, who says, Oh, banana. We have $25 from Corrosive Frost, who says, I love me some AGDQ time. So glad y'all are back again. It's so awesome how Lanky Kong drinks with his monkey feet. We need more of that on stream. <laughs> I, okay. Anyone got a bottle? No, we don't see that during the run because we aren't buying moose from Cranky, but normally Lanky does drink the potions with his feet. Oh, yeah. goodness. We have $250 from Totodile, who says, Fun game. Does it have a randomizer? Does, does it? it? Does it? Is that uh, DK, the Donkey Kong 64 randomizer.com? Do I have that right? Uh, yeah, it's Donkey Kong 64 ran it's DK64 randomizer.com. DK64 okay. I thought it was DK64 randomizer at AOL. Oh, it's an AOL link. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's really old. Oh, I, I think yeah. you have to go on to AIM Instant Messenger <laughs> in order to access it. I think that I still have a disc from a textbook in the 90s. I wasn't alive then, but I should have a disc from that. Yeah, you've got to put it in your Wii U in order to load it up. Oh, okay. We're learning so much today, folks. All right. So right here, uh, Connor is going to be exiting Crystal Caves. 
um, and then is going to be attempting to do a phase fall um, on this ledge right here. Nice. Very nice, very nice. Wow, look at that. Another way through a wall. So, he's doing that to get this golden banana right here. That he's going to make his way over to uh, Creepy Castle. You can hear the game desperately wants to kill Donkey Kong during that <laughs> animation. <laughs> yeah, we probably should have had a ear warning for that one. Sorry, chat. Yeah, there's only one level left. Wow. So we actually aren't going to turn in keys here because if you turn in key six here, all that happens is that K. Rool's mouth starts to open and then closes again. So by turning in key five earlier, we unlocked levels six and seven. So we can just go straight to Creepy Castle. Yeah, there's some interesting key turn in shenanigans. It's not just like look, key one opens level two, et cetera, and so forth. Uh, key two actually opens levels three and four. And then the issue with six and seven as well. So, uh oh. Oh my god. <laughs> he made that look so simple. Yeah, that, so this, this is, is a is... tough phase walk because if you fail it, that Gasplat shockwaves you, then you fall into the green goo and die. And you can also get some backwards momentum there and cause yourself to go into the green goo. All right, time to get spooky, guys. I think castle. casually, this is one of my favorite levels. Um, it's probably the level where everything is the easiest to, like a lot of stuff is right next to each other. A lot of the Kongs have their stuff in very close proximity, so it, you never really feel too, too lost. I was gonna ask, is it the easiest because it's at like two FPS on N64? <laughs> that too, yeah. There we go. There we go, nice. Normally you're supposed to do like a whole barrel course for that, but uh, it's better to just phase block. You might also recall that there's a, um, a mini game in this tree where you have to shoot a target using the sniper that you get in a Creepy Castle. Yeah, we're doing it right. We're going to do it right now. We're just going to do it right now. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> I've never seen anybody kick I've, through I've that wall. I've never kicked through that wall before. That was a brand new setup. That was... <laughs> Brand new strats live go. at ACQ 2024. Okay. <laughs> so that, that, would you say that's never happened before? That has never that happened before. That was before. me just not rolling correctly and accidentally doing a kick. Oops, I forgot the route. Yeah, we're gonna, we're go, gonna go over here. It's gonna so, um, swim to the crypt right here. Very nice angle right there. By clipping out using swimming, you can actually swim on the air, which is what we're doing. We're going to use that to swim to the other side of the level. So yeah, slightly faster than walking all the way around. Um, so one thing of note, a really fast way to kill Kasplats is once they've been knocked down, you just touch them a little bit and their health goes to one. That's why he was able to shoot like one peanut there and kill that Kasplat. And if you've played this game casually, you've probably figured out that you can uh, run into the Kasplats, hit them, and then hit them while they're down, and then they always seem to die when they get back up. So we're, we're using that same uh, property where they go down to one health if you hit them while they're down. And I hope, uh, I hope the audience is ready for yet another set of turn-ins. We are rocket barreling up here to do our final blueprint turn-ins of the day with Diddy and Donkey Kong. Gotta really make them count today. Let's get ready, audience. Except, unfortunately, since we're in Creepy Castle, this is one of the longest cutscenes we have to watch. We've timed other routes that would go to other snides that would have a shorter cutscene here since we have to watch the boat go across, the orange there, this glove come out, but it just so happens it's still fastest. Oh, banana. banana. Oh, banana. banana. Oh, banana. Oh, banana. All right, we are nine golden bananas away. Hopefully that's Correct. <laughs> I'm just hoping we end with 100. Well, I think this game is a few extra ones, See just after. in case. Yeah. 
<laughs> and, and if you're really desperate, believe it or not, this game has a cheat code where you can make the B lockers like less golden bananas. It's pretty crazy because we haven't discovered that until like what? 2020, 2021? Yeah, uh, it really was very recent. recent. It was 2020, yeah. By taking the Kong, who's supposed to fight the boss of the current level you're in, to the level lobby, and then entering, was it up, down, left, right? On the D-pad, yes. On up, the D-pad, right. you will hear um, a sound that kind of sounds like shooting the gun, and that will lower the B-locker to one banana. It's being a banana. <laughs> oh, oh, banana. banana. Oh, oh, banana. banana. Oh, banana. Oh, banana. Oh, banana. Oh, banana. So that was the last open end of the run, but um, you can always hear more if you learn how to speedrun this yourself. Um, if you check out our speedrun.com profile, you can find all of our guides there, plus a link to our Discord if you want to get into DK64 speedrunning. Yeah, we're always willing to help you get into speedrunning, like get into voice calls and stuff like that. And yeah, this is... Generally pretty approachable dudes. I mean, he's wearing a, a Donkey Kong onesie. Like, we're, we're approachable, right? <laughs> wearing I feel a like onesie. that's the opposite of approachable. Uh, I'm sorry. I am that's DK. Your, I'm sorry, that's your skin. I'm sorry. <laughs> And Connor, of course, is just wearing a banana Hawaiian shirt, so you know he's um, perfectly willing to help you. Yeah, I realized we were having these Hawaiian shirt Fridays in grad school, and I didn't own a single Hawaiian shirt, so I thought, why not get one that has bananas on it? A uh, funny story about that shirt is that Connor visited me where I live, um, which I live on the East Coast, he's from the West Coast and we went to a Dunkin' Donuts that I always frequent. And the staff that has never talked to me, like three people came up to tell Connor how much they loved his banana shirt. <laughs> I had been going to that Dunkin' Donuts for at least th like three or four months at this point. Never heard a thing, but it's because I didn't wear the banana shirt. Nice banana skip. We have our uh, second to last boss right here. A really cool thing about this boss is that this boss is meant to be done with all the Kongs. And if you were to have, I, mean, I don't know, maybe you got into this level really early and you went to go into this boss, well, you would be given all the Kongs in the game after leaving the boss. So there actually used to be a lot of routes that involve what we call Castle Kongs, going to the castle and getting all the Kongs immediately. And I think the coolest thing of all, we actually have a meme category where we can go and get Tiny Glitchless in this level. It's really crazy. That's the only Kong you can get glitchless from this boss. So this boss has a lot of RNG to it, but Cutout can't appear in the same cannon twice. So it is a one in three chance that I'm standing next to the correct cannon there. And there are specific spots that Connor wants to set up for later because um, his patterns get a little more erratic as we go. Yeah, basically, Connor is going to attempt to find the phase the phase angled wall. Um, that will help him set up for later. If you yeah. can kind of see the cobwebs on the corners of the pillars, uh, if you see cobwebs diagonal from each other, that's the north wall that you want. It'll never not be funny to me that one of the bosses of this game is essentially, essentially kroll.png. <laughs> yeah. And now a fake one starts showing up, so that's why Connor avoided the other cannon that was lit. Oh no, you got hit. You were healed one. immediately. Voice actor for King Cutout must have had <laughs> one fun day, let me tell you. I like to imagine that Grant Kirkcorp literally did all the voices in this game. Yeah. He did do some, didn't he? Mm -hmm. I know he's a voice. He's a oh. voice in Banjo. Oh, he got There's the good one. wall. Okay, we, he we got, the, we good got the good RNG here. So now we can clip out of bounds and then switch to Tiny super quickly. Yeah, so the game considers this oh, as void. Uh, oh. Yeah. No. <laughs> Never mind. I should have killed the ghost. So I, I, I could have skipped the entire cycle there if the ghost didn't hit me. Um, so something about this last phase as well, um, they always move in a counterclockwise direction. Um, so if you were struggling as a kid, you may have not noticed that. It makes it really easy to know where he'll be for the final phase. 
And like Sir Oldest said, we're kind of using the cobwebs on those back pillars to tell us where to line up, um, because that tells us that we're facing the right wall. Yeah, since only one of these four walls we can actually swim through easily like that. And it is intentional to end this fight as Tiny, so assuming I don't mess up anymore, we will end this fight with Tiny, and then she will be right next to her final golden banana. So you're telling me you didn't get rid of Blinguini on purpose? <laughs> it was 100% intentional. Good. Not good. <laughs> Lanky's law. Anyways, um, Connor is again at the same wall, the phase wall. Um, he's going to be able to swim out here and uh, get the key. Uh, he doesn't actually have to go swim back to the middle to grab it. Yeah, uh, and since the boss is actually over, he's not going to lose Tiny once he voids out here. Just void there and warp into the key. Nice critter in a sheet pick. <laughs> Alright, there's only one banana left, and that's right here. Oh. oh, that does not happen. <laughs> and got that the does first not frame, happen uh, ever. Got the first frame sax play, too. <laughs> wow. Are we... Oh, 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 that was almost as good as that golden banana gets. Oh, man. Yeah, that was, that was a great showcase of the movement. Yeah. And that is 100 golden bananas. All right. But we're not done. We got something else we got to do. Get 101%? Yeah, actually. Flip out first. This is a uh, retribution for getting the <laughs> first try. Uh, I'm just getting there, text there now. Go. It's been patched. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Breaking I, evil. I, I told him not to connect his Wii U to the internet. It's, you know those servers are still up until April, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we're just going to go turn in keys six and seven, which takes a while. So we have time for some donations. Absolutely. We have $15 from Assistance. She said, uh, hey, so I rolled through my wallet. How do I get back? <laughs> <laughs> void. Void. Yeah, you gotta void. We have $50 void. from Stuffy360, who says, a wall is just a door that doesn't realize it yet. Mm. Mm. Deep. We have $10 from Magis Enforcer, who says, sitting at the dinner table watching this with my two-year-old son. Every time you guys run, oh, banana, he starts saying it too. Keep it up, everybody. <laughs> We're going to convert all the two-year-olds by the end of this run. <laughs> I'm sorry if we give them a phrase that they'll never get rid of. Oh, never, ever. We'll, we'll see them in the DK speedrun server in like 12 years. It's okay. <laughs> oh, banana. Oh, banana. <laughs> we have $5 from Anonymous. It says, this is my six-year-old favorite, new favorite speedrun. <laughs> He's falling over laughing every time he hears, oh, banana. <laughs> oh, banana. <laughs> We have uh, so many O oh Banana donations, y'all. Uh, we have $100 from Nick with a little smiley face who says, Oh, banana. We have $64 from Anonymous who says, Oh, banana. We have $25 from Oh, banana who says, Dear Oh, banana. Oh, banana. Sincerely, Oh, banana. <laughs> So, uh, when did you start your whole shift? <laughs> yes. Oh, banana. Well, here we are in Hideout Helm's lobby. This is the last of the levels, really, but we're not collecting anything here. We're on a mission. Yeah, there are probably at least 10 different ways to clip into Hideout Helm here, but I went to follow the rules of the category, no levels early, and actually go past B Locker. So, fun fact, I lost a world record because I clipped into this level one time. <laughs> oh. All right, a nice little new trick here. This is yeah, this is a funny one. Standing attack cancel climb, <laughs> where he just keeps trying to do his attack and slides up the wall. There's a rule that there's another one you have to try to do in real life now. <laughs> that one looks fun. That one I want to try. <laughs> okay, so we're coming up on a on a on a famously annoying trick here. Ah, uh, yes. This is called switch kick, and it's a moon kick off the switch. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. let's go! <laughs> That 
Oh. Without a doubt, one of the hardest tricks in this run, and one that we were very worried about in the practice room a few hours ago. All week, my viewers have been telling me, don't go for that trick, Connor. You're bad at it. <laughs> Got our first try today. Well, we, now we get to ban anyone who said that. That's a good part. <laughs> Take that, viewers. We still appreciate you. Uh, I just uh, want to uh, say, okay. too, that navigating Hideout Helm out of bounds is maybe the hardest out of bounds to navigate. You have to know where you're going, and it, you're, there are long sections of just running in the void with your Kong. Um, the, I believe there there's a backup if he accidentally falls in bounds, but um, it's not something that's ideal in a speedrun, of course. He's just well, eventually, he's here. getting down. So here's a funny just to clip. Just out of bounds again. Yeah, that's just like that. That's another clip that you should try if you haven't. Yeah, I do it all the time. Yeah. Yeah, try it on your computers at home. Jump on them, and eventually you'll fall through them. So the rules of the category don't require us to actually do anything in Hideout Helm, hideout helm here other than collect Key 8. So all of that movement was just to get back here as fast as possible. And don't forget to look at the window. Uh, I think I looked at the window. <laughs> so, um, so if Connor didn't look at the window, it might result in what we call fake key, which means that you collect the key, but then the game just says no when it's time to give it to Kalum. Ooh, nice. Yeah, and if you want an example of that, load up the AGDQ 2013 run that C Fox did. <laughs> okay, so now we have uh, another trick coming up with Lanky Kong. Um, it's going to be attempting to skip the cutscene that proceeds after turning in the last key. Uh, it, called the takeoff cuts. Yeah, and on Wii U, this is this is the hardest trick. This is the hardest trick. Yeah, on Wii U. and I, you, yeah. you only get one attempt, and if you fail it, you lose what? What? Two and a half minutes? You lose a, like a minute, minute and a half. You know, yeah, minute. for failing this. Yeah, it, this is a really difficult skip. The the bright side is though, if he fails it, we get to watch the best cutscene in the game. So. It, it really is a great. Cut yeah, scene. there's a very long cutscene that plays here when we free K Lumsy, but we're gonna try to skip it by overlapping it with the first time text of collecting a rainbow coin. All right, can we get quiet, please? Oh, nope. Dang, so okay. I, so it is a frame perfect long jump you have to do there and I just pressed A a tiny bit too late. So uh, ideally, he long jumps into the K-Lumsy cutscene. It gives his, him control while this thing is happening right here, and he can run to the exit before the next cutscene plays. That would allow him to skip this. But now that K-Lumsy is free, we are seeing K-Rule board his ship and try to make his getaway. While we are watching this cutscene, can I have a, uh, a moment for a very special announcement? Yes. Yeah. We are less than $100 away from 60K. All right. All right, 100 old bananas, let's go. We have, <laughs> that is, uh, I believe, 87 more bananas, if I'm doing math right. Oh, it just moved again. 82 more bananas. Oh, banana, 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 oh, banana. I, uh, I have $100 here from Irrational Soup that says, banana, oh, does that count? <laughs> <laughs> we'll give it to them. Yeah. So despite K. Lumsy being trapped in this tiny thing, he just comes out of the ocean, I guess? <laughs> this absolute titan of a lizard just yeah, look coming at him out compared. of the ocean. He is not happy about K. Rule, keep, keeping him locked up for so long. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> his brother. The, the, the amount of lore in this one cutscene <laughs> is, is so insane. Liz. Then this big guy just, you know... They're in a rocket ship and they choose to just fly in circles around the island instead of, I don't know, go just Wait, a little a bit. there's a giant boulder oh, there? Oh, watch out for the rock! <laughs> oh! It, the w <laughs> and oh. that's literally the last you see at K. Lumsey unless you get 101%. <laughs> All right, so K. Lumsey has knocked down K. Rule's ship. So now we can go over to it and begin our final boss fight against K. Rule. One of the hardest final bosses casually of any game I've ever played because there are five total phases with each Kong. Or I'm sorry, there are five total phases. One, each phase has a different Kong at it. And obviously, K. Rule has an entire boxing arena inside of his ship here. <laughs> As one does. Seven more bananas. All right, so this boss fight is pretty long. It takes about 11 and a half minutes, so maybe some donations now. Yeah, we'll, we'll probably do some explanations <laughs> at the beginning of each phase, and then um, we can go to donations once we finish. 
Absolutely. We have $250 from Kyovo, who says, Oh, banana. Donating for Donkey Kong, my favorite childhood memory. Thank you, AGDQ, for making the start of each year special. We have $5 from Mean Dean, who says, I uh, just want to hear my friends say, Oh, banana, one more time. First time donator, long time watcher, love what y'all do. And with that, we are over $60,000! Weird thing about this fight is that it starts with Donkey Kong and doesn't end with him, despite him being the main character of the game, which I think is funny. Yeah, so as Donkey Kong, for this phase, I usually like to just jump up on the corner here, because you can actually grab these. A lot of people didn't think you could grab them as a kid, so you can just jump up on the corner and do this. Um, and eventually, barrels are going to appear. Kong's going to try to get him one. This kind of overlaps the cutscene and will just fire right away. Um, Donkey Kong, a.k.a. myself, has hit K. Rule four times this way. And it's the same every time. There, there are different punch cycles, though. Like for this coming cycle, it's going to be three punches. But then for the last one, it's like seven. It looks a lot more simple than it actually is because the timing on the last two punches are very tight. Yeah, you uh, sort of have to know it's coming and you can't react. Yeah, and the good news is these aren't like randomized or anything, so we can just memorize when they're coming. It'd be a shame randomized. if they were randomized. Can you do that? It, randomized. Yeah. What, what is that word? I, I don't know. It seems like a pretty random word. Hmm. So now we got uh, Diddy Face. Yeah, and K. Rule was nice enough to give Diddy a uh, jetpack barrel here, so Diddy will be able to fly around shortly. And we still have infinite health, so thank God for that during this section. Yeah, otherwise Connor yeah. would probably died by yeah. now. I'm gonna take advantage of these hip mo the uh, hip boxes here for these lights, and just can shoot a little bit through them. Yeah, if you position your gun kind of nicely, like right here, you can just get both of them in one go like that. It's pretty great. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is usually like the hardest phase for most players because the jetpack is honestly just like really bad controls, but um, for speedrunners, it is the quickest phase. Oh, and a cool fun fact about the jetpack for casual players, if you hold Z, the jetpack will hover in place. You don't have to do anything but hold Z for that. You're, that's wel you're welcome, by the way. Yeah. That's something I only found out about because of the speedrun. It's such a, such a vital movement mechanic. Oh honestly. yeah, it's, it's so hard to control that rocket barrel. All right, and that's Diddy phase. All right, now we have the most hilarious phase. <laughs> Lanky phase. Where you're dealing fatal blows to K. Roll <laughs> through <laughs> slipping on a banana. Yeah, so suddenly Lanky now has the ability to stretch his arms really, really long. <laughs> he hasn't been able to do this at any other point in the game, but now in the final boss fight, when you press the B button, he can stretch his arms out like the DK rap says. Just he, for you? He went Super Saiyan, that's why. Super lanky. Super lanky. So K. Rule runs around a ring in a set pattern every time. So ideally, we're playing the instrument in very specific spots so that where we throw the banana peel is where K. Rule is at the exact time. Doesn't always quite line up, but you'll kind of get the idea as long as we don't mess up. Which is already looking sketchy, but... It's pretty clean. Do I have a quick moment for an announcement? Yeah. We are exactly $22.71 away from meeting the secret car fight for Jet Set Radio Future. It's it's so close. It's less than 99%, or less than 1%. It's driving me crazy. Can somebody please help me with this? So, yeah, someone to donate $2, <laughs> please, dollars, donate. please. $2. Who's Tudos? I only know DK. Uh, Tudos is just... Oh, DK64 Randomizer! Yeah. Oh, that's what you've been trying to tell me this whole yeah. time. Oh, my bad, my now, bad. Now, as DK, how do you feel about randomization? Uh, it's, it's pretty cool. You get to find, like, Kongs anywhere. You can find moves anywhere, you know? All right, now, as we get to Tiny Phase, you, want, you guys want to do, like, a few shout-outs and then... Yeah, if you want to yeah. go go like across the uh, across the way here, everybody have shoutouts. 
Go ahead, Connor. All right, so yeah, this run is almost wrapped up. We have about six minutes left, uh, but Tiny Phase really is <laughs> a bit of an auto-scroller, so I'll take this time to just shout out my commentators, especially for being here. Thank you for making the rough trip out to be here with me during this weather. Uh, Shouts to my entire community for supporting me the last nine years of speedrunning this game. That is what has kept me going and with the motivation to continue playing this game. Uh, Shoutouts to all of the speedrunners that I learned DK64 from. Tudos, Seafox, Sidernicus, Hipster, Speedfrog, Emorbiter were all the people that I watched when I was brand new and they're the ones that got me to this point today, and I'm honored to have done this run today. And I guess for me, shout outs to our overseas friends in Japan, Cigna and Toyomana. Absolutely. Um, I believe Cigna has the any percent Wii U VC record, and Toyo has the NLE Wii U VC record. So, shout outs to them. As a, uh, as a newcomer DK64 randomizer runner, <laughs> I'd really like to shout out DK64 randomizer and the whole community that's formed uh, over the past few years. It's actually so robust, and um, I'm so proud of all of the developers of randomizer. Um, and I'll, also, I wanted to shout out my uh, girlfriend, uh, Stinky. Oh, and shout, I guess for, since we're on the topic of the random, shouts to B- Balam, Elrock, the Sound Defense, the um, Almost Seagull, lots of contributions today. Um, Snernicus. From, yep, lots of contributions there. All right, one question for you, Tudos. Have you ever noticed this green stench that is on the floor of the fight here that's coming from K. Rool's toes? Yes. Yeah. Really? I realized for the first time last week that Carol's clothes are so smelly that there's this green wave coming out from them. <laughs> oh my god. Um, so, just to, speaking of toes, I'll also give my shout outs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyway, uh, shout out to Connor for letting me be up here and for being a really cool friend for the last couple of years. He's one of the first people I really met in speedrunning that uh, made me want to continue on and was always really nice and fun to talk to. And I absolutely would not be both in this chair or just at this event without him. Uh, so shout out to Connor. And uh, just shout out to the Rareware speedrun community. It's really large and people work so hard for these games every day. Banjo-Kazooie Xbox just recently got a massive skip and was dropped down by another minute barrier. Um, yeah, shout out to the Rare community and shout out to my personal favorite Rare community, Conker's Bad Fur Day. Um, that's one of my main speed games and I absolutely love the very few people we have in that community who run it. So shout out to them while we're here in the Rareware times. Yeah, obviously this uh, phase, this fight's still going for Tiny Face here. Um, you have to go inside the toe four times, and you have to injure each individual toe. <laughs> yeah, and it's like you increase by one damage for each toe. So the first one is one shot, the second one is two shots, and you know, just use your imagination from there. Yeah, and just to point out, Connor is going in the first person here. This is a very laggy park in on N64. So this is again, this is what Connor's saying is kind of a remnant of how he used to play when there was only the N64 version. Um, and I guess if you want to do this, Connor, as well, I'm not sure if you have oranges or not. Oh but, yeah, um, let's this, get some oranges. This. Uh, this uh, phase makes a lot more sense when you throw oranges at his toes <laughs> instead of feathers. Yep. And for what it's worth, we mentioned toes.txt. There is a text file that the community has together of the exact places that you want to stand during each of the toe attacks. <laughs> um, and it is affectionately f- referred to as toes.txt. Um, and it's a very funny thing to ask people if they have. All right, and as we go into chunky phase here, about, got about two minutes left, and this is the part of the run where <laughs> I am famous for, apparently, for doing a backflip here, and if people want to know the story, it was September 28, 2015. <laughs> you know the date? I know the, oh, I know this date. Yes, I know the Tudos date. had the 101% world record of five hours, 58 minutes, and one second, and I was on pace to beat him and get my first world record ever. However, on the last input of the run, instead of doing a primate punch and pressing the B button, I accidentally hit the A button, backflipped instead, 
And then I didn't get the world record. <laughs> it has a moment that has lived on in infamy. And at the time, I felt so sad. I thought I would never get a world record and that that was it. And that was the end of my speedrunning career. <laughs> but <laughs> lo and behold. And that's when he was on pace for like uh, five hours and 50 minutes. The current world record is five hours and 10 minutes. So it's, it's <laughs> been quite a journey. And uh, it is held by our very own Connor 75. He recently, uh, about a year, was it about a year ago, started incorporating phase walks and uh, got a whole new route that dropped it by like five minutes. It was crazy. So fun fact, when Chunky is punching in the corner, um, like we said, you can't like walk around, but... Uh, oh, what? <laughs> uh, he j that can happen. Yeah, <laughs> it's like damage. if you jump like in a really weird part of the detransformation. Right, we'll okay, that, too. that can also happen. <laughs> you guys are getting all kinds of treats. Yeah, so like I was saying, Chunky cannot move around while in the corner, but you can jump and backflip, which I think is really weird, but mm -hmm. hey, we got that moment because of it. All right, we are coming up on time here when I do the final primate punch. On Please the don't roll. press A. I'll try not to press A and do a backflip. He wouldn't. Why would he? Oh, whoops. Oh, oh no, no. He backflipped. And time. GG. <laughs> Two hundred four hundred eight. Two hundred four. That's solid. That was pretty good considering I was sitting in a tag barrel for a couple of minutes. Yeah, thank you so much. Awesome games done quick for having us. This was a lot of fun. And now we start one hundred one. Yeah. <laughs> now, now we start one hundred one. Yes. Yeah. Don't move. Now we're gonna get the rest of the bananas. <laughs>